Uh, welcome to the next video on mathematical logic, this time discussing uh, propositional logic and specifically truth values. So I just want to point out briefly that uh, because this is a video that's sort of truthy, right, it's about truth values, therefore this is a video on the semantic side of the discussion. Okay, so the first object to introduce is what we will call a model, and this is a, an assignment of propositional value, sorry, propositional variables to 0, 1. So effectively what we're doing is we're taking those atomic formulae, the P0, P1, so on, and we are assigning each one some truth value, 0 or 1. Uh, and so we call this a model. Now, of course, we would like to be able to talk about the truth value of any whole formula, whether it's atomic or not. And so we would like to take this model W, extend it to a uh, function W hat, which has as its domain the set of all formulae, again going to 0, 1. And we define this recursively. And in particular, Right, we, so, so we basically associate the conjunction symbol with the conjunction function that we talked about in the previous video. So what is w hat on any formula of the form alpha conjunction beta? It is equal to this uh, thing over here stated in terms of the conjunction function. So right, so on the left hand side we have the conjunction symbol and on the right hand side we have the conjunction function. And the idea is that you sort of recursively apply the function to alpha and beta individually and then put the results of those two evaluations of w hat on some formula, put them together with the conjunction function on the right hand side. And so that's how you evaluate a conjunction sentence. I do want to just briefly point out that this makes sense because of unique, uh, the unique reconstruction theorem, right? You could not define a function on a, a formula with the form of a conjunction if you did not have uniqueness, right? Because then, then you would basically be able to evaluate the function according to some two different rules and potentially get two different outputs. So that's kind of, in a sense, that's really the cash value of that theorem is that it makes functions like this well-defined. Okay, so uh, we will frequently be lazy about several things when doing logic. Of course, we've already talked about how we will lazily not always write parentheses in the sort of like complete way that we emphasize they must be, but you know, just out of laziness, if we all know what's going on, we'll drop those parentheses. Well, similarly with the hat on the W, so uh, very rarely is it all that important to actually distinguish between the W and the W hat. Uh, we'll just always assume that W it can be applied to any formula and understand that really that's W hat. Uh, and then uh, as another matter of laziness, uh, we would like to know that a given W always uniquely determines what W hat is, right? The W hat exists and is unique. But uh, the proof is an easy use of induction, and so I'm going to omit it. So just to address some of the other symbols that may be familiar from an earlier course in symbolic logic, uh, we will actually not have officially this uh, right arrow symbol in our language. We will just take that to be sort of notation that should always be translated into negation alpha disjunction beta. So that symbol is not officially in the language, it is always in a sense some kind of shorthand for this other sentence that is in the language. And therefore we also don't need to say anything about how to do the truth value assignment to a conditional sentence because it is already given by our semantics for negation and disjunction. And likewise for any other symbol that is familiar from uh, an earlier symbolic logic course. Moreover, we will have a special symbol down here. This symbol is sometimes called top uh, or verum, and this is bot or falsum. And uh, so the uh, verum is basically an abbreviation for the sentence P1 disjunction negation P1. So that in some sense, this is like the canonical 
tautology, right? We'll talk more about tautologies later, but for now, just uh, as, as a sort of, uh, again, just uh, creating some syntactic sugar in our language, right? Basically a symbol that always gets, right? When you, act, when you take it seriously and say something about it, you always have to first translate it into the thing that it really is. So, right, so verum is uh, syntactic sugar for this disjunction, and falsum is syntactic sugar for this uh, conjunction, right, P1 conjunction negation P1. Okay, so the last thing to talk about in this video is the idea of a formula representing a Boolean function, in particular some n airy Boolean function. So we will take the sort of symbol that we have for the set of all formulae, this script uh, or calligraphic F, and if we write a subscript N, then we are talking about all of the atomic, or sorry, all of the formulae which use only the atomic sentences P1 through Pn. What we can then do is we can define a, an n airy Boolean formula, or sorry, an n airy Boolean function based on any uh, formula in this F sub n. The idea, it's probably best to just give an example. So let's talk about P1 conjunction P2 disjunction P3. You can sort of think about this as basically saying, if you give me some assignment of the truth values to P1, P2, and P3, I can give you back some truth value. And that, that's just exactly the same thing as what a Boolean, an n airy Boolean function is, right? So just for demonstration purposes, suppose that I assign this uh, 1, 1, 0, for instance, right? This, this is really just a triple in the, uh, right, the cube of the set 0, 1. And when we sort of, you know, uh, uh, use this assignment as an assignment to the uh, variables in the formula, then we know that, right, so this whole part gets evaluated to 1, and then because it's in a disjunction, the whole formula gets evaluated to uh, 1. And so we can say that, right, if, if this is equal to alpha, right, so we say that this is our sentence alpha, we can say, we, right, so, so we say that, well, let's just say this particular w applied to alpha returns the value 1. And so this is how we define the function on the input 1, 1, 0. So, right, so we are effectively using alpha to define the function f. In particular, we do so by taking any assignment of the atoms, evaluating what the value of the sentence must be, and therefore that is the value of the function on the same uh, assignment of the, of the propositional variables. So, right, so we say that alpha is the representation, the formula representation of the Boolean n airy function